What I experienced in that place I'll never forget. You'll have to listen to this to know about the thing that I saw, and why you should be careful out there in the dark world. My life was traumatized by this event. I feel writing about it will help. I feel that recording it will help me to release some of the dreadful memories of what happened. My poor family. When I was younger, my family purchased a beautiful home in what seemed in the middle of nowhere. It was cheap and only five miles away from my school. It was marvelous. I can remember all those times I used to play down in the garden with my toys. Just think about how great life was. School was a drag, obviously, but the, the idea that this place was my playground was amazing. I was an only child, so I really had to invent some games to keep me amused when my parents went out. Life was brilliant. Every day after school, I would come home, rush outside, and go into my own world for hours. Life was amazing. However, there were two questions that started to bug me after a long while. The first one was that my parents never allowed me in their room, and they would always keep the door firmly shut. It really bothers me at the start of living in this palace but then I realized that the whole thing was well, odd. The second question is this. There were fields that backed onto our back garden. These fields were full of wind turbines, lots of them. I didn't quite understand what they were back then. It was a while ago. Let's just say that these turbines seemed to go on for miles. They made me feel weak and vulnerable. They seemed to stare at you with their arms spinning round and round all day long. I was never told to go into these fields. It wasn't because of the turbines, oh no. It was because of the figure that stood in the distance all day and all night long. Who the heck was it? One day, my mom went into the town and she left me alone, in our labyrinth of a house. It was irresponsible, let's say that much. I was nine years old and my dad was at school so that he couldn't look after me. Anyway, I just accepted it. She drove off and I was very happy to be alone. I could play my own games in the house and no one could stop me. I was ecstatic. I potted out the back garden and the turbines stared at me, inviting me into the fields where they worked and rested. I couldn't resist. No one was here to tell me off, so I could just get away with it. And I slowly walked across the garden, kicking my toys out of the way. My mind began to buzz and invent stories. I looked left to right and turned around to see if no one could see me. I proceeded towards the garden fence and into the fields. I climbed over the fence of the struggle like an, like an old man trying to get up from his seat and I managed to get over I managed to get over the wood fence and I just looked up in awe at the sight of these things. I looked down and I noticed the figure. They were very far away but my parents knew something that I did not know about the whole thing. After checking if no one was watching again, I began to walk across the field. I kept my eye on the figure. I didn't feel too afraid as I continued to wander past the turbines. I thought that I should turn back. I didn't want to be in the field anymore. Not because I was afraid this time. Usually I disliked the turbines, but this time... I was bored. What was the point of it all? How did my parents know this thing wasn't a statue or something? They just assumed it was something bad to scare me from wandering off from the house. Every child should explore. It's part of growing up. I began to turn back, but as I did so, the sky suddenly turned dark. Very dark. A storm cloud must have arrived. That's great. Now I would get soaking wet, and I would be caught by my parents. I started to run back to the house, but something didn't feel right. My whole body began to feel almost tingly, like, a, like an icy chill. I put it down to the cold weather that had just arrived. I ran back to the house and took a quick glance back at the field. That's when I noticed that the figure's head had moved. I thought nothing of it at the time, but as I ran inside, I began to come to terms with what I just noticed. I ran up to my bedroom and barged my door open. My bedroom looked down onto the fields, you see. And I looked out the window and I realized it had moved. The figure was now looking at the house. It must have always been that way, I thought. I spent the rest of the evening contemplating everything that had happened in that field. What was this thing? It had to be a person. Maybe they were they were stuck. 
If they were, though, they'd be calling for help, surely. I went to bed that night feeling a little odd. Not afraid, just uneasy. And the next day, my mom went out again. She gave me the option to stay at home or go with her. Was I going to go with her? <laughs> no, I was not. But I stayed at home and I went back to the fields with a feeling of dread in my stomach. I didn't know why. The person seemed lonely. I needed to ask them what they were doing. I plucked up some courage. And I began walking. I didn't blink. I just kept my eyes on the figure for the entirety of the walk. They were definitely looking at me, without a doubt. I tried waving at them. In turn, I received no gesture back. As I kept wandering closer, I noticed the clothes the figure were wearing. The majority of the figure's clothing was red. The figure wore a hat with a white feather on top. Even the shoes were red. I could make out the face now. They had a red, bulbous nose. The bottom half of the face was painted blue. It appeared their lips were painted white. This person was a clown. What would a clown be doing in the middle of a field staring at my house? Hello? I called. No response. I stood at the far distance of the clown. The person was certainly a man. I kept calling in the clown. No response at all. What are you doing here? I asked. Suddenly, the clown blinked and shifted its head up a little. I stood back a little. Can... Can you hear me? I asked. You should turn back. The clown finally responded. What's your name? I kept questioning him. Does it matter what my name is? I'm here because I want to be here. I live here, child. The clown responded. I live here, actually, I said, reassuring him. I live here. You disturbed me. And those who disturb me help me paint. I was very confused at this point. Help him paint what? W what do you mean? I'm going to tell my mom about this, I said with childish authority. Of course, I thought that I was right. I was a child. I was boss in this conversation, so I thought... Your mother will refuse to believe you, boy. She's merely a cold-hearted woman. She's seen me. Why do you think she doesn't want you down here? She knows of me. Oh, I wonder I really did. I was listening intently. My mom had been here? That's why she was telling me to stay away? No, it, it couldn't be. This is just my dad dressed up, I thought. I thought that it was some cruel joke to keep me away from this field. Stop playing around, Dad! I shouted. You think your daddy will come and save you? No, he won't. You see, your parents. They leave you alone a lot, don't they? You know what I mean. You're always left alone in that house. Why, oh why is that? I told them. I warned them. They're scared. They're scared of me. You see, boy, I've been waiting for you a while now. When they're out, I'm about. How do you know they're leaving me alone? Who are you? I shouted. Your worst nightmare. I belted it. I turned around and I sprinted as fast as I could. I ran and I ran and I ran for ages, it seemed. I looked behind me. And he had gone. I charged back into the house. They weren't home. The sky was so dark. It was 7 p.m. Mom and Dad should have been home soon, I thought. I burst into tears and I went to the phone. The phone was smashed to pieces. Someone must have been in the house. No. It can't be. I had to get out of the house. I was in floods of tears, and my burning eyes kept blurring up. I rubbed them viciously as I repeatedly tried to open the front door. It wasn't having it. I kept tugging at the door, but nothing. And that's when I stopped for a few seconds. If this thing wants my parents out of the house for whatever reason, is it something to do with their room? I tried to shake away the thought. I kept clouding my mind. They allowed me into their room in the last house. 
Why not in this one? I had to find out what was going on. I heard noises coming from the kitchen. Wiping away tears, I charged upstairs and I burst into my mom's room without even thinking. Once the door had smashed the wall next to it, I stood there in silence. I didn't... I didn't even want to... I... I don't even want to say this, but... Hanging from the ceiling... It's my dad. Three chains emerged from the ceiling, each one dug into his back, blood still dripping from his lifeless body. I vomited. I kept throwing up every time I looked at the thing. The walls were covered in writing. After darting my eyes away from the body several times, I noticed that the writing all said the same thing. Sacrifice. Suddenly the doorway filled with red. It was him, the clown, and I screamed as he walked closer and closer towards me. He held a paintbrush in his left hand and a paint pot in his right. I told you, he said, lunging towards me. The paint pot came towards my head and I screamed and covered my eyes. And then I woke up. This seems like a, a stupid little plot twist, doesn't it? It's not. Please keep listening. You have to find out the truth. It was... It was a dream. And it was early morning. I had dreamt the entire ordeal. Not, not moving house, obviously, but the clown and the room and everything to do with that horrid field. I slowly wandered downstairs, gripping my head. It hurt really bad. I must have been thrashing around in the night because of the nightmare and hit my head. I was burping up sick because of what I had witnessed in my dream. It made me sick to my stomach. Maybe I was coming down with an illness. Not again. I called for my parents. No answer. They must have been outside. I went to the back door and I opened it and hobbled outside and I called again. Still no answer. I wandered to the edge of the garden to see if they were in the fields. I saw something in the distance. I thought it was them. I called, and the figure looked at me, and waved. I was happy knowing that my parents were safe and sound, and that I was going to be alright. The turbines weren't spinning that morning. I spent the rest of the morning inside watching TV. I didn't bother looking at the window to see where they were. I was too involved in watching cartoons to even remember to check. And by 4 p.m., they had still not returned to the house. I went outside to go and look for them, and that's when I stopped dead in the middle of the field. One of the turbines was red. As I looked up at it, I screamed in horror. At the end of two of the arms of the turbine, there were bodies spinning round and round. The figure in the distance began to wave at me again. No, it couldn't be that. That wasn't a dream. I was just concussed, and the, the paint pot gave me the injury on my head. That's when I noticed the writing on the fence, the writing that wasn't there earlier. The very words that made me suffer for countless years now. Thanks for helping me paint. 